Hi, Greg. Welcome and welcome to Seattle. Well, thank you, Vinay. Great to be here. So uh, we have been working for the last couple of years designing and building multiple data services for OCI. Yep. And taking a step back, it's been a couple of years since you joined us from Hortonworks. How is the experience so far? Well, it's been great. Um, you know, when I was at Hortonworks, I was able to work in a very focused way uh, on the big data segment and really get a deep understanding of both the technology substrate, but also what customers are trying to do and what they're solving for. Um, and you may have noticed that in this space, um, the industry has been struggling a bit. The independent companies, several of the incumbents have disappeared. Uh, the remaining incumbent is trying to figure out how to get their footing. And it raises the question, is the big data segment going away? Is big data done? And I think the answer is definitely not. What's happened is big data has moved to the cloud. And it's moved to the cloud for very specific reasons. One is that it's much cheaper. The second is it's much easier from an operational standpoint. So for most enterprises, do big data in the cloud is a no-brainer. The challenge is the big data technologies haven't become entirely cloud-centric to really exploit the best characteristics of the cloud. So the opportunity we have at Oracle is to take these worlds, bring them together as kind of the best of breed offering for big data and data management overall. So uh, that means that we are doing things to leapfrog the way data analytics is done in the cloud. What does that mean, Greg, specifically? Well, a couple things. One is we really look at data management um, as a platform opportunity. Um, so we have individual services that solve specific problems. For example, we have a data integration service that brings data into the cloud, allows you to load it into data lakes or into data warehouses. But we also um, connect that up to our big data processing capabilities and our data warehousing capabilities. And the idea is that these services are meant to work together seamlessly so that we can give you an end-to-end -end solution that solves enterprise problems, but it does it efficiently, and it does it with very low cost structures and very low operational overhead. So for example, if you look at our data warehousing strategy, um, there's been a big focus on autonomous as a concept. The autonomous concept is using AI and machine learning in the back end to lower the requirements for DBA-specific tasks and for operational tasks. Our big data solution in the data lake area uh, is entirely serverless. So you are responsible for telling OCI what are the data sets I want to touch, what are the scripts I want to execute, and how much do I want to use in terms of computational power. The system takes over from there. Great. As you can imagine, our approach to building services and value-added uh, capabilities on Oracle Cloud is to enable enterprises to bring their present and build their future, mm -hmm. right? With that terminology, a lot of our customers have Hadoop in the on-prem mm -hmm. because that's how they have been doing data analytics for the past five to 10 years. How would we solve that problem uh, in a way that it, it's a good path for them to bring their existing solutions as is if they choose to, mm -hmm. and then embrace modern technologies like uh, the new services that you're building here? Yeah, we have quite a few customers that are following that paradigm shift. Um, and for them, it's usually incremental or evolutionary over time. Mm -hmm. So we have tight partnerships with the leading vendors in the industry like Cloudera. So if a customer is using Cloudera on-prem, it's very easy to bring that Cloudera cluster and those workloads um, directly on top of OCI. It's uh, cost efficient, uh, it's, it's very fast and functional. So it's a great transition path without disrupting the business, without having to do re rewrites to just do a lift and shift of the cluster itself. Once you have that data uh, within OCI, it's easy to spill it into the object store, start to extend the workloads with the new paradigm services. So for example, our data flow serverless Spark service um, can be used for net new workloads to build on the momentum that the enterprise already has around a Hadoop-based solution. Makes perfect sense. Uh, so I think that leads to my next question, especially in the big data space the ISV ecosystem is very vibrant and ever-changing, right? You can talk about cloud errors to Hortonworks to H2O.ai. The space is very broad. How do you think the partner ecosystem playing a role in making life easier for customers? Well, the partners are essential in this space, right? You, you know, even if you go 100% with uh, OCI native services, you're going to want to use complementary technologies. So we're working with the partners to make sure that they're certified, to make sure that they're optimized, um, to make sure that it's easy to use on top of OCI. 
So there's not an either or uh, in terms of what we're trying to bring to the table here. It's really both and, use the best of both worlds. Absolutely, they can take use of our new marketplace and there are a lot of things that are plug and play and certified that not only works with the older technology, but works with the new services that we are building for them. And even in the new services, we're often packaging uh, parts of the technology suite that, it, that uh, are, are in the product offerings of the companies you mentioned. For example, um, we'll have H2O libraries within our data science service. So you can take advantage of those native in the services, or you can work directly with the H2O technology um, adjacent to our uh, data science service. So you really have a broad range of choice. All this sounds exciting, especially for new customers who are building truly modern AI-centric, data-centric applications. While talking data, it's a very common problem that customers ask us all the time. Yes, I, all those things are compelling to do that in the cloud. I have massive data that's staying in the on-prem. Some are in databases, some are in uh, you know, my object store in the on-prem. How do I migrate it seamlessly to the cloud? So I know you're working on a bunch of uh, technologies there, Greg. What yep. can you tell us yep. about it? Uh, so there are three primary paths in OCI uh, to bring data sets into, into the cloud uh, easily in, in an automated fashion. So one is database migration service. Yep. Right? So if you have either operational or analytic relational systems, um, you can use this service to hook them up, bring the data in reliably uh, to one of our cloud-based data management services and then to uh, ensure that you have a smooth cutover as transactions continue to process on the on-prem systems. We have a data integration service, which gives you ingestion and ETL and data prep type capabilities, mm -hmm. allows you to load both data lakes and data warehouses um, with a very intuitive uh, graphical flow designer so that you can be very prescriptive about the uh, data pipelines that are bringing the data into the cloud. And then the third area is our streaming services. Uh, and those allow you to connect up into net new types of data, sensor-driven data, et cetera, land it into an object store, and then you can continue to process it there with your technology of choice. Yeah. Talking about streaming service, what can you tell us about our approach to building services using open source technologies? One of the, one of the guiding principles we have with our data services is that we're uh, working hard to make sure that we're taking the best of open source and optimizing it for the cloud. Um, in some cases, that's internal to the service, so it's mm -hmm. not directly visible uh, to the end user by design. Yep. Um, but in other cases, um, when you think about the programming paradigm, for example, um, we're using Apache Spark very aggressively. And uh, anyone who's doing popular uh, big data frameworks, popular AI or data science frameworks, um, they don't have to change anything to run an OCI. They just use the technologies they're comfortable with. In many cases, they can just take their workloads and transfer them into OCI, and they work as is. So Great. the idea is um, open source optimized for the cloud um, and really to minimize any uh, perception of in vendor lock-in. We want to be the company that's making open source successful, lowering the barrier to adoption and lowering the barrier for success for no, teams. No, I completely agree with you on that. Talking about the future, right? Especially on the data services side, what things were standard two years ago, they're not anymore, right? How would you see this evolve in the next two to five years? Mm. Well, one of the things that's interesting about the approach we've taken is um, we provide native services that we think give you the full power of the conventional big data world, conventional analytics world, conventional data science world. Um, but you're not bound to use those services only, okay? You can uh, apply any technology you want to OC in the OCI context, run it across our compute infrastructure, and access the data in the data lake, access the data in the data warehouse. So in a sense, you're future-proofed by design. Yeah. Um, and then second, the way we've implemented these services, they really are meant to be extensible. So as new technologies emerge, for example, in our serverless big data offering, uh, beyond what we're seeing in terms of Apache Spark adoption, we can add those in and make them available to customers in a very easy to use, very low overhead uh, path to consumption. Fantastic. 